Hello everyone and welcome to another video with me 320 sim pilot and today we're taking a look at one of the little systems in the Airbus that helps us out a lot the Outstar mode we're going to talk about what it does I've had a few questions asking what Outstar actually means and also how it affects us as we fly the aircraft and some of the traps that it brings to flying the Airbus around something that we have to think of day to day when we operate the aircraft as ever, I am a real-world Airbus pilot, but none of this is for any real-world use. It's just to give you some extra context on your home simulations. We're going to be starting off in flight in the A32NX by the Fly-By-Wire team in Microsoft Flight Simulator, of course. And we're going to have a look at what Outstar actually does for us. Let's get started. Here we are in the flight deck, and let's first take a look at what Outstar is. Outstar is an FMA that will replace out in this column here. This is showing us which vertical mode the aircraft is currently following. Remember the FMAs, which are our flight mode enunciators, are incredibly important and they show us what the flight guidance system is following. They also show us what the autopilot will do as a result of that because of course the autopilot will follow that flight guidance. So here we can see in the left is our speed or what our auto thrust is doing, so currently in speed mode. Here we have our altitude, in this window we typically see uh, out, out star, um, and we'd also see glide slope, glide slope star, out cruise is another one, and of course vertical speed, open climb, open descent, anything to do with going up or down. And over here we have heading or LNAV or lock star or lock and anything else like that. And this little window here obviously is used for the category of landing. We'll talk about that another time. So out star simply is different from out in that it is a capture mode. In the Airbus we use this little star to designate when the mode is being captured. So we're currently in out, altitude hold mode, it is going to stay at the selected 6,000 feet and it's telling me that with this little out window. Now if I was to go down to 5,000 feet and I'll pull to do it quickly, so there's open descent, out blue arms beneath it and it will get out star. You'll notice we do not get an armed out star, so this arms mode is what's coming next. So in this case out, the airplane is expecting to level off at the blue 5,000 feet and that's why we get it in blue here it's armed it's the next mode to come but it won't actually change directly into out it will go into out star at a suitable point out star as I say is the capture it's the conversion from an open descent which in this case obviously is a thrust idle descent down or sorry we're only within a thousand feet so it's only going to do a thousand feet per minute but either way it takes us from our vertical mode and then it will convert itself into the next mode by using out star into level off it does this by projecting ahead, so it sees the 1,000 feet per minute vertical descent, so it will delay the outstar conversion until we're pretty close to the level of altitude because it doesn't need to do anything too quickly. There we go, there's outstar. So we, you'll see that out was armed, but we went straight into outstar, and now it will level off, and that will convert to out once it is captured. So all pretty straightforward, and that's all it's telling us. We get the same effect in glide slope star. Although glide slope is armed, the aircraft will actually change into glide slope star while it captures and then eventually glide slope fully. Most airlines don't require us to call out all of these changes. Some do, some will have it just that you read out out star um, and then that, that's good enough. You're seeing the capture happen. You're monitoring the FMAs to make sure the aircraft does it. It's a very good system and the out star mode in the Airbus is incredibly good. It's very robust and I'll show you what I mean. So let's climb up to a flight level 100 now and we'll go to standard. And there you go, there's thrust climb, open climb, out blue is armed again. And this time, because we're going more than a thousand feet, we'll get a high amount of thrust, we'll get climb thrust going on. There it goes. And over here, we'll see a much higher vertical speed. So now, Outstar will engage much earlier. It's going to want to look ahead and it's going to need, to, it knows it needs to level off. It can't level off at 200 feet to go like it just did. So it's going to level off much earlier. And it's the same principle for climbs and descents, obviously. So here we go, zooming up 5,000 feet per minute. In the London TMA, which is where we are, we're just going past Heathrow, you wouldn't be doing a high vertical speed like this because there could be traffic above you. And by doing this, you could give yourself a TCAS warning very easily. So very silly thing to do. So there it goes. It's settled down now, 3,500 feet per minute. Still pretty good. And it's already gone to outstar, speed outstar. Now that's great. It's the aircraft adjusting itself uh, for that path. But you'll notice something. If I now go to idle thrust, so I bring the engines right back, the airplane is remaining in outstar mode. It's already drawn ahead how it thinks it needs to capture. It's already planned that. And look at that, the speed will just wash right off. So not too much of an issue in this case. There's no reason for me to bring the thrust right back. Let's put it back where it was in the climb gate and let it accelerate. But you'll notice the airplane is just going to keep flying what it thought would be the suitable intercept. 
eventually it was going to protect itself obviously if we got too too slow but it's it's a risky situation to get yourself into so that is a downside of being an out start with high uh, vertical speeds put all thrust back in there we go speed mode and you'll see here it's doing a very good job of controlling that level off because obviously from 4,000 feet per minute we can't just level off in the last 200 feet it would be no good at all so eventually it's going to level off here now in the real aircraft it's very possible to get slow um, by doing this and I'll show you why a little bit later but there you go so outstar adjusts its intercept point accordingly according to your vertical speed it's very good at doing that the result is that if we were descending let's say we wanted to go down to flight level 70 thrust idle open descent there's a good rule of thumb here for pilots the one I apply which isn't a rule but it's a, it's a rough idea um, is that I will try and keep myself within a minute to go and no no quicker than that now to explain that that means at 3,000 feet to go like we have now I don't want to be doing more than 3,000 feet per minute at 2,000 feet to go which will be at flight level 90 I don't want to be doing more than 2,000 feet per minute and then as we pass a thousand feet to go I want to be doing about a thousand feet per minute so hopefully that makes sense that means if we were climbing up to um, a flight level you know 10,000 feet away then it wouldn't really matter what vertical speed we do at first here you go we're about to be seven eight nine so we're two thousand feet away doing two thousand feet per minute that's okay but if we're going any faster outstar could engage because outstar i find that there are lots of different clever rules about it it works in its own way but it will engage itself at an earlier point uh, or somewhere just after about a minute to go i i find so um you'll see here it's actually doing quite a nice job of settling 250 knot idle descent is quite gentle but as we get to 1500 feet to go that would be about 1500 feet per minute maximum now there are some places that prefer that you do 1500 feet per minute within 2000 feet of your level off busy airspaces that uh, might like that so that's sometimes a local requirement but in terms of my own general rules when there are no other requirements I try and keep it about a minute to go within those last few thousand feet. The reason I like that is as we saw I don't like being an out star a long way from my cleared altitude it can cause uh, all sorts of headaches so there we go we're 700 feet to go at 1500 feet per minute it's a little bit fast the last thousand feet to go though anything from 1500 feet per minute and lower is probably acceptable but that again that does depend if there's traffic beneath you if there's terrain beneath you you might want to reduce that and as we get lower down certainly you'd want that a little bit uh, lower than that speed out star there we go and it's going to do a nice job leveling off so if we were to let's say let's say we wanted to climb up to flight level 120 so i pull that and then i pull the speed and wind it back to get a, a really good rate of climb going we could actually, and this does happen, let's say air traffic control asked us to expedite our climb to flight level 120. So maybe I press expedite like that. Thrust climb, expedite climb, out blue 120, and we go shooting up and you get a huge rate of climb on because we had excess energy in our forward speed. The risk here now is, look, we are 4,000 feet to go, doing 5,800 feet per minute. It, the real aircraft would go into outstar any second now. I would expect it to, to go into it. Um, and then you're going to have a problem. It's going to gently lower that nose trying to maintain an arc from this sort of ridiculous 6,000 feet minute here we go out star I think that's actually a little bit late compared to the real aircraft but now look its target speed is 250 knots it's gently lowering the nose but it can't do it fast enough because it's trying to just capture 120 and all it's doing is looking at this vertical speed it's not really looking at the speed so it can get awkward you can find yourself running out of energy if you let it go into out star the other problem is now look we're at 1,000 feet to go, doing 2,300 feet per minute, and we can't change that. If I try to override it with vertical speed in the real aircraft, it won't let me. It will just say outstar again. As you can see, it's just not having it. In the real aircraft, it does actually flash for a second to vertical speed, and then it goes right back into outstar. What it's doing is it's, it's very defensively forcing itself to level off at that 120, because it knows we've set it. It knows it wants to level off there. So what some pilots end up doing is, uh, it's called FCU bingo, where you just end up pressing buttons up here too quickly. So that's just a, a bit of a, an awkward situation to be in. You can find yourself close to your level off with a high vertical speed that you can no longer change because it's in outstar, it's following its profile to level off, and you can't override it into a more sensible vertical speed. If we had traffic a thousand feet above us, we could have easily got a TCAS doing that. So that's just another reason to keep that um, one minute thing in mind. So if I'm doing 5,000 feet per minute and I'm at 5,000 feet to go, I want to start getting that rate of, descent un uh, rate of climb or descent under control. For this next clip I want to show you something that happens at high altitude. You can see we're passing 35,000 feet climbing up to flight level 380 which is close to our recommended maximum because we're up at 69 tons. So we're quite heavy to be climbing up to these levels. 
No problem there though, 800 feet per minute, quite normal, uh, nothing too exciting, we've got relatively light winds. So what can happen is that you get a really interesting effect up here. You could suddenly find yourself getting close to a jet stream or um, some, some other situation that means that the aircraft, like an increase in speed or a temperature change, that means that the aircraft gets a sudden boost in vertical performance or an increase in airspeed. So if we add a wind layer, um, let's hope this works. I haven't tried this yet, actually. And I'm going to put it right up here at 35,000 feet. Same wind, 2704. But if we were to imagine we just starting to clip into a, a, a high area of wind and let's actually swing it round into more of a headwind a bit more northerly and you'll see there we get a sudden increase in airspeed and an, an increase in the vertical speed because of course the aircraft will pitch up now to maintain that speed we're still at climb thrust it's an open climb so see that high vertical speed so that we get that so we could be punching through a, a, a layer with lots of wind and it's going up and up and this does happen and we got 20 30 knots no nothing unusual about 30 knots you can have 100 knots up here quite easily then it goes to mac out star and oh no we suddenly find ourselves losing that airspeed we've gone through the layer now because uh, we've gone up so quickly and now it's back to the four knots we had originally fine except we're already an out star the nose is up high doing 1600 feet per minute up at flight level 370 and the speed's washing off and this is a really nasty situation we don't want a low speed event up here so this would be very awkward. So this is another reason that if you see that high vertical speed, you might need to intervene and do something. Because if Outstar engages up here, you could run out of performance. And that's what's happened here. Um, we couldn't do anything once we'd gone into Outstar very easily. But there is one backup. There is one override that will sort it out for us. Now, of course, we can take over. We could just disconnect the autopilot. And I could do that and put the nose down and get that vertical speed level is probably enough just to let the aircraft catch up with itself. That's obviously available, but there is a slightly nicer way which keeps the automatics engaged and the reason it's nicer is because it means both pilots can see what's going on. If you just disconnect the autopilot and do something, the other pilot needs to catch up uh, and they won't be able to see what you're doing through the PFD. They'll see the result of what you're doing, but they won't know what you're intending to do. Um, a nice way to keep everyone in the loop is you can also, in that same situation, just push to level off and it will go to VS0, of course we're already level here. So let's say we're trying to climb up to 390, I know we can't actually get there. So you're in Mac open climb like this, uh, and it's trying to climb, it's doing a bad effort at it, and we've got, um, you wouldn't actually climb that well, it, it would, it, the real aircraft would just not go anywhere, it, it would protect itself, um, because it would see the speed is too low. But say you're in this situation, like we had our out start earlier, you could then go, boom, VS0, it says VS0 up there, and it will lower the nose straight away, and that will override out star. So that's quite a handy way. If you find yourself an outstar too early, that is the simplest way to get back control of the aircraft from the automatics. And obviously the next step, if that isn't working, is to take out the autopilot. So as a brief summary then, hopefully that's shown you that outstar is a very powerful mode. It can help us out a lot and it is something that makes the Airbus very nice to fly around because it is so protective of our level offs. It really won't let you interfere with them unless you, you try very specifically. I have flown aircraft that are actually a little bit more um, let's say blasé about whether they want to level off or not and if you press the modes incorrectly or you interfere with the aircraft whilst it's leveling off they would actually they would they would just go straight through the next level even if you've marked it up whereas the Airbus is, is very different the Airbus is very good it's very sp um, makes a very focused effort to make sure that it levels off at the altitude you've selected in the FCU window that little window where we put in the, the sort of desired altitude to level off at so it's a good system but just be aware that if you're in a high vertical speed as you get close to your level off you are putting yourself at risk of being stuck at that high vertical speed which can lead to performance issues either high or slow you could find yourself in the descent going into outstar when you're near the red bar and it could then go into outstar and not raise the nose quick enough because it's following that curve that sort of algorithmic curve it follows until a level off uh, and then it will uh, try and overspeed, so you'll need to use the speed brakes or perhaps push vertical speed and level off the aircraft yourself. These are these are both options that you might need to use. And obviously the final one, if it's not doing what you want, you'd have to take over, take the autopilot out and fly the aircraft, which is totally acceptable, of course, but we, we try to keep both pilots in the loop. Next, we're going to look at what can happen on an approach, and it won't surprise you that there's a very similar effect where we can find ourselves running out of energy. So let's take a look. Here we are now on final approach, fully configured to land at Heathrow's runway 27 left, which you can see out there. And there's a reason we're at 27 left. Um, I haven't done everything properly here, by the way. This is just uh, just to get the aircraft in the right place. 
Yeah, so there's a reason we're, we're landing on 2.7 left today, and it's because of the go around altitude. If I bring up the chart for you, you'll see that the go around altitude is climb straight ahead when passing 1,080 feet or D0.0, whichever is later, climb, turn left, track 147 to 2,000 feet, uh, and then after passing six miles up to 3,000. So the point is the go around altitude is 2,000 feet initially. That's our first level off. So I'm going to put 2,000 feet into the window. And there it is, 2,000 feet, blue and armed. Let's give the cabin crew their ding. So there is a slight um, issue here, which is that that is a low go around altitude. So if we now go around, we're going to have initially a very high vertical speed as we get up to that uh, 2,000 feet. Um, and as we put full thrust on, we bring in some of the drag flap and those will go straight up and we'll have a very high climb rate. You guess what's going to happen next. <laughs> With that high climb rate pointing at 2,000 feet, which is going to be quite close, and we could have climb rates in a go around. You know, you're at full toga thrust, you put the nose straight up, you can easily get 3,000 feet per minute and more. So we're going to see the airplane capture very quickly and go into outstar. As we then pass through, and I'll just adjust it, um, not all airlines use 1,500, a common one is 1,000, so let's put in 1,000 feet in here. As we pass through a thousand, also two thousand will be over here. As we put pass through a thousand feet per minute, sorry, a thousand feet above the ground, the airplane is going to say thrust reduction, so it's going to flash lever climb. So what's going to happen is we're going to have a very high rate of climb. It'll go into out star, and then as we pass through a thousand feet, it'll start flashing lever climb. If you then bring the thrust levers back from toga to climb thrust, there's quite a big change in thrust. And there is a risk, it's not certain, but there is a, an awareness needs to be kept that by doing that, you're removing thrust from an airplane that's got a, potentially quite a bit of drag and it could find itself struggling to maintain the speed as it goes into the outstar mode or as it tries to capture that 2,000 feet, just as we saw earlier in the, the high altitudes. Now, this one is not so common. This is hopefully a rare thing to happen and there's every chance that we could do this completely normally and we'll have no issues. So it's a, a case of... The pilots just need to be aware they need to well as we always do we need to have a very good eye on our airspeed and we need to know that if we're in out star the airplane will potentially keep that nose high as it flies that arc to intercept that that 2000 feet so it's just something we need to be ready for so um, let's give it a go i, I really don't know if this is going to work and we know that the performance in microsoft flight simulator is sometimes a bit optimistic but let's let's try it out so we're going to go full toga we're going to bring those flaps in stage to three there's Mantoga SRS go around track at two order thrust. It's armed. Then we've got positive climb there. So gears coming up. And you'll see the nose are going really high 2,500 feet per minute, 2,800 feet per minute. Out star, lever climb. We bring the thrust right back to the lever climb. There we go. And it's doing okay. It's got the nose down fast enough for us actually. So it's doing 2,000 feet per minute to go. But you can see the speed is not, is, uh, not climbing away. In fact, it's going to reduce shortly as it tries to. It should it should target a higher speed as we go through the the thousand feet to go that sh bug should go up there to 220 although it, it's worked out for, because there's a little simulation of what could happen you can see that we're climbing we've got flaps at three and climb thrust and the airplane may not accelerate as quickly as you'd hope so there you go it, it would have probably worked out either way there we're through uh, f so we'll go to flaps one but it's something to be aware of that at high weights especially we were slightly overweight here i put us at 69 tons uh, at high weights you could find yourself running out of energy uh, in outstar mode so that's all for today's video i hope it's been interesting for you this is a, a real part of the airbus that we we deal with every day and it's something the pilots have to be aware of so i thought it would be good fun to share it with you guys and those of you using the airbus in high high workload situations busy airspace is a common place for this to become an issue where you don't want to get TCAS alerts by being stuck at a high vertical speed or if you're operating in high performance areas so if you're heavy if you're up in the cruise or if you're operating out of airports with high elevations or performance restrictions these are other situations where getting locked into outstar may cause you um, something to think about and require a bit of adjustment or input from the pilots There'll be plenty more videos and guides like this to come on the channel, so do please subscribe if you'd like to see more of it. We're also streaming regularly here and on Twitch, so do please uh, check us out on those channels if you'd like to see uh, a few live streams. That's all then. Thank you very much for watching. Do please keep safe and well. Bye-bye.